FMI Year 10s. Seems like we haven't been around each other for a whole week, which we haven't. Welcome back to science. We're going to finish off uh, in the next uh, few lessons this topic of the periodic table. So we're coming to the end. So we're coming to some really interesting uh, larger questions. Let's start with these three thoughts. If we look at what science should be like or what high school science was like when I was growing up, I would have said to you, well, science is all about the evidence that you get from an experiment and it's logically following a procedure to, follow, uh, to find a solution. So for those three ideas that you see in front of you, science for me growing up and the, the, um, uh, the teachers that I had, the bottom two, logical and evidence, are probably the two that I'd focus on most. If someone said to me at the time, especially during high school, hey, science is all about creativity as well, I would have looked quite skeptically at them, questioned them going, well, actually, no, I don't think you're right there. Well, going through uni and, and uh, doing some research, etc., I'm surprised how wrong I was because a lot of real science and the majority of real science, especially if you're wanting to make amazing breakthroughs, a lot of it has to do with your creative brain and creativity. That's why I'm so passionate about SRPs and especially the hardest bit of SRPs, which is the first few weeks, trying to find a way and trying to find a problem, trying to find how you're going to do it, the procedures, the methodology, to make it fun and interesting and unique. That is the hardest thing because we don't normally associate thinking creatively, uh, creatively with science. And so when we try to get that into our brains to start the process of answering a big question, how to do it, how to do it um, the procedures that we have to follow, all from scratch, that is a difficult process to try and figure out. So today we're going to have a look at creativity, logical, uh, logic and evidence as a foundation of science. In the context of the periodic table and the development of it. Now, we have already looked at the history of the periodic table uh, and or all the um, historical figures. Here I'm going to uh, just uh, get you to, for two periods, uh, two lessons, this one and the next one, I'm going to get you to uh, look at these three ideas and unpack them and try and uh, break it down. So firstly, you're going to read a story. So the story is, again, it's a storyline of three or so pages, so it will uh, take a little bit of time. So here's the story here, the crazy history of the periodic table. I'm going to get you to read that and that one and that one. I know there's a lot of uh, interesting names and a lot of uh, PowerPoint also thinks that uh, some of those are absolutely wrong, uh, except, sorry, pseudo quicksilver. Uh, that is an interesting term, um, but the rest is just a person's name. I'm going to get you to read that, and as you're reading that, think through when each person is thinking create, uh, creatively. Now, what does that really? What does that really mean? Well, someone when they're thinking how and uh, how and why they're thinking big ideas, big questions, the unknown, like you were doing at the start of your student research projects. That part is all about creative thinking. Write that down here, which should be uh, for you on about page 23-ish. But whenever you read uh, that um, story and someone is thinking creatively, just write down here who they are and what showed you that they were thinking creatively. Then think through and uh, who and how they were thinking logically and who and how uh, and who and what evidence they were giving. 
Now, logic is all about giving um, practical, very succinct, precise, identifiable um, procedural information. They were thinking through very deeply this component, then this one, then this one, then this one had to be here. There was uh, less creativity in that component and usually logic has to come in when they have come up with an idea and they're trying to get evidence. So for me, usually you would see, especially in this story, you'll see some of the characters in that story be creative at the start, trying to think through uh, and big ideas. Then they have to um, come up with a logical solution to that problem. And then in order for people to agree with them and for people to um, not disagree with them, they should have evidence that backs that up as well. All right. So you really have to understand what these terms mean in order for when you go through your, um, your work here to unpack when these people were um, being creative, when they were being logical, and when they were... Uh, when uh, you see evidence in here as well. You should only need to do three points of creativity, three points of logic, and three points of evidence if you can. So nine in total would be great. In order to help you with that, there is also uh, a click view video. It does go for a really long time, so feel free to um, kind of fast forward it or um, work through it. You don't need to watch all of this though to fill this in um, well, all right? So the um, story that I gave you, uh, that should have enough in there to have three points, three points, and three points for each of those. But if you need extra information, and it is actually an interesting video as well, you can watch this uh, hidden order video as well. All right, this is a two period um, activity so you will continue this or if you're really really quick you will be able to get this done in one lesson and then the next lesson you'll click onto it you'll see that this is uh, also for the next lesson and you won't have to do anything for our next lesson please submit this task or a photo of this uh, the answers of this um, page to see how in the due work that will uh, show up in this lesson all right Good luck.